Theresa May faces another big problem. The Prime Minister's political secretary, Stephen Parkinson, and Number 10 itself are under fire, accused of outing and endangering an ex-boyfriend and whistleblower who's made sensational claims about cheating during the EU referendum. I know that Vote Leave cheated, that people have been lied to, and that the referendum wasn't legitimate. We've got our country back. We examine how Vote Leave used a Canadian data firm with strong links to Cambridge Analytica and its sister company, SCL, to target and bombard voters with ads during that campaign. We aimed it at, I can't remember exactly, but I think roughly about seven million people, one and a half billion um, digital ads. And allegations that to pay for it all, Vote Leave broke the spending laws, then tried to cover it up. We're going on a path to Brexit based on lies, based on cheating, based on what is essentially a scam. And what does that mean for our democratic process? We can reveal that on Thursday, the man you've just heard there, Shamir Sani, came here to the Electoral Commission with two pro-Brexit friends who say they all helped on the Vote Leave campaign two years ago. And they explained to the Commission in detail why they think Vote Leave broke the law and exceeded the official spending limits during the EU referendum campaign. Earlier in the week, their lawyers submitted statements on behalf of the three whistleblowers, together with this 46-page submission drawn up by two top QCs and three ring binders of supporting documents, of which these are duplicates. Shamir Sani now gives his account to this programme. He's still pro-Brexit, but explains to us why he thinks the official Brexit campaign two years ago seriously cheated. In 2016, age 22, having left university, he volunteered to help vote leave just before they won designation as the official Brexit campaign for the referendum. His first contact happened to be one of Theresa May's closest and longest serving political advisors. I got introduced to Stephen Parkinson, who was at the time national organizer for Vote Leave and now is political secretary to the prime minister. Uh, And we spoke about how I could get involved and we talked about how it was important for people like me, particularly, you know, being Uh, British Pakistani uh, and Muslim to get involved with the campaign. Sani also got to know the Vote Leave leader and guru Dominic Cummings, long a close advisor to Michael Gove. We're basically campaigning for Britain to leave the European Union. Sani, seen here out on the street in Birmingham, was initially a Vote Leave outreach volunteer working among Muslims. But then he says Stephen Parkinson assigned him to a new Vote Leave offshoot called Be Leave, directed towards young people and progressive types, where he worked with another 22-year-old who appeared in this Channel 4 News debate. We have Darren Grimes. He's a fashion student from Brighton and founder of the Be Leave campaign. I think that outside we can be a prosperous, liberal, free trading nation, you know, and that is the best thing for our generation. Here too is Darren Grimes, this time holding a Vote Leave poster at the big launch at the Vote Leave offices on the day the referendum was called. He and his Be Leave campaign were based inside the Vote Leave HQ. This is going to be a team effort. Now, it's not going to be a Conservative effort, it's going to be a cross-party effort, it's going to involve people of all parties and none. Here are Shamir Sani and Darren Grimes in Vote Leave sweatshirts, posting Vote Leave leaflets, Vote Leave brolly to hand, the day before voting. Sani says that in almost all they did, the two young, close friends reported to Vote Leave national organiser Stephen Parkinson. 
There was no time where anything we leave did didn't go through Stephen. Any sort of article that I posted or an article that I wrote, I would run it through Stephen. I would say, is this okay? I, I sought advice, as did Darren. So there was no moment where we weren't involving Stephen in, the, in, in Believe's processes. Much more important to Stephen Parkinson inside Vote Leave's Westminster HQ was Zach Massingham, who runs a Canadian data firm called Aggregate IQ, or AIQ. And here we find a connection with Cambridge Analytica, the data firm exposed by this programme last week for political dirty tricks and misusing data from Facebook. Chris Wiley, this week's Cambridge Analytica whistleblower, told us AIQ was effectively the firm's Canadian branch. I knew a lot of people in Canada um, at the time. Um, I invited uh, a whole team to come to London uh, to help uh, set up the team that eventually became Cambridge Analytica. Um, but there were a couple people um, who were in Canada and they weren't mobile. So the agreement was that we would uh, set up an entity in Canada, which was referred to as SCL Canada, um, and that entity became Aggregate IQ. AIQ insists they only had limited involvement with Cambridge Analytica, but documents we've obtained show multiple links between AIQ and Cambridge Analytica's parent company, SCL. Dominic Cummings, Vote Leave's overall leader and strategist, seen here celebrating victory. What are we doing? Take me back your soul! Later paid huge credit to AIQ, saying publicly they couldn't have done it without them. He also described how in the final few days, Vote Leave and AIQ carefully targeted a select group of voters and bombarded them with digital online messages, spending millions in the process. And we held back almost all of our budget and then we basically dumped the entire budget uh, in the last 10 days and really in the last three or four days. Um, uh, and we aimed it at, I can't remember exactly, but I think roughly about seven million people um, saw something like, I think a billion and a half, one and a half billion um, digital ads. It's about taking data so I know what is going to motivate you and give you the exact thing that's going to motivate you, which might not be what your friend sees, which might not be what their friend sees. When people think about political messaging, often they think about you know, the town square where I'm you know, standing out with my bell you know, and saying, this is what my message is, and it's for the community to listen to and debate. The difference is, with targeting, I'm whispering into every single person's ear, and, and I'm whispering something after I've learned everything about them. Remarkably, well over 40% of Vote Leave's funds ended up with AIQ, though it's still not clear how they chose the 7 million people who were bombarded. And in the closing days, Vote Leave quickly moved towards the limits of what they could legally spend. Two campaign groups were designated to fight the referendum. Britain stronger in Europe on the one side, Vote Leave on the other and they were each allowed by law to spend a maximum of £7 million. But other groups or individuals could also register to take part as permitted participants and were allowed to spend up to £700,000, providing their spending was truly independent of the two main designated groups. Now, the allegation here is that Vote Leave broke those rules by channelling hundreds of thousands of pounds through a participant who wasn't truly independent and wasn't in control of how the money was spent. That registered permitted participant was actually Darren Grimes, the young fashion student and organiser of Believe. Suddenly, in the final days of the campaign, Grimes received donations worth £625,000 from Vote Leave, an incredible windfall. But that money was paid directly from Vote Leave to the Canadian data firm AIQ. Shamir Sani says he and Grimes had no say in the matter. When Darren told me that it was almost £700,000, the first thing I asked was, OK, so 
can I get my, you know, some of my travel expenses refund, reimbursed? You know, because I didn't have a job. I would just come out of graduation and I was volunteering, so I asked for money. And Darren said, no, I don't think we can. The only way for them to give it to us is if they give it to AIQ. And that's where, at first, I was like, oh, that's a bit odd. Um, but I didn't think anything of it because we were, we were, we were volunteers. I thought it, this, is, this is the process, this is how it works. What would have happened if you'd said to Stephen Parkinson, no, no, we don't want to spend it on AI kit? We didn't ever feel like we had that level of control. That's what I mean. We never felt like we had control over the, organi over the organization itself. Sure, we, f we, were, we were delegated responsibilities such as, you know, here, why don't you make this advert here? When, and when we started working with AIQ, we were like, oh, here, this looks better than this. But in terms of sort of uh, money, we never had a say over that. We never had control over that. And so, in effect, they used Believe to overspend. And not just by a small amount. Almost two thirds of a million pounds makes all the difference. And it wasn't legal. Like it wasn't, it, they say that it wasn't coordinated, but it was. And so the idea that it was, that the campaign was legitimate is false. After the referendum and media reports about Darren Grimes' mysterious role, the Electoral Commission investigated. In August 2016, Grimes told the Commission, the spending was done in isolation of Vote Leave. We didn't discuss with Vote Leave how he would spend the money, apart from telling them it was for the digital campaign, and that is why we asked for the money to be paid directly to the company we were working with, Aggregate IQ. He added, Vote Leave had no say or input in our strategy or our campaign spending. After the referendum, we were, well, Darren was quite literally being told exactly what to say by Vote Leave staff members. There was specific, don't say this, say this. Avoid saying that, say this. If they ask you about AIQ, you say it was, and I'm quoting here, a donation in kind paid to AIQ by Vote Leave for services incurred by Believe. Yesterday, Dominic Cummings and Vote Leave both suggested Shamir Sani was an unreliable witness, now giving a completely different version of events. Cummings also says the law itself is unclear. Darren Grimes told us his conduct was entirely legal and proper. And Stephen Parkinson issued an extraordinary statement. He said... Shamir became an occasional volunteer for Vote Leave and other Leave campaigns, and we began a personal relationship. We subsequently dated for 18 months, splitting up, I thought amicably, in September 2017. That is the capacity in which I gave Shamir advice and encouragement, and I can understand if the lines became blurred for him. But I am clear that I did not direct the activities of any separate campaign groups. I had no responsibility for digital campaigning or donations during the referendum and I'm confident that Vote Leave acted entirely within the law and strict spending rules at all times. And so I was convinced up till, you know, Carol's article. Carol's Carol Cadwallader. Article, yes, um, that what we had done was totally fine. That it's just politics, these people saying that we cheated. It's just politics that the Electoral Commission is relaunching their investigation. Like that's what we were being advised, being told that, oh, they're just gonna try to find any reason to stop Brexit from happening. Don't respond to them. The decision I agree with, leaving the European Union I agree with, but I don't agree with losing what it means to be British in that process. Losing what it means to follow the rules. Losing what it means to be a functioning democracy. I just, I, like it's, it's, this whole thing just, just frightens me. Well, Michael is still with me. Explosive allegations, Michael. What are the relevant people saying? Well, everybody we mentioned in that film uh, insists that they've done nothing wrong. Uh, Darren Grimes, as uh, his lawyers say, that once the donations were made, uh, that he uh, completely obeyed, obeyed the law. AIQ sent us a statement about an hour ago saying that they've never entered into a contract with Cambridge Analytica. They've never knowingly been involved in any illegal activity. Dominic Cummings uh, issued an 8,000-word blog uh, yesterday defending himself. Vote Leave say uh, that they actually got permission from the Electoral Commission 
to make donations to other groups. But that's not really the issue here. The issue here is who controls the money uh, once it's been received uh, by other groups. Now, clearly, there's going to be huge pressure now on Stephen Parkinson, not just over his role in Vote Leave and whether uh, they cheated, uh, but also, of course, over the, uh, the, the accusation that he outed uh, Shamir Sani, um, his former uh, boyfriend. And now the Electoral Commission have been looking at this for more than a year now, but the Electoral Commission, rather like the Information Commissioner with our earlier allegations this week involving Cambridge Analytica, they're, they're short on resources and they're short on powers. Uh, they can't, for instance, overturn uh, the referendum result if they were so inclined. Uh, they could fine vote leave, but that would be fairly meaningless given that vote leave were only there to fight this one particular uh, referendum. Uh, they could, I suppose, refer matters to the, uh, the police or the Crown Prosecution Service. The interesting thing is what it means for the Remain side. It would be interesting to know, for instance, who's paying for these expensive lawyers that uh, Mr Sani and others uh, have, have been uh, uh, using. And the Remain side will be able... will be now feel more confident about saying, look, uh, there you have it from these Brexiteer whistleblowers they say uh, that Vote Leave cheated. It shows that the referendum was a fraud, they'll say.